everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. If you're new here, I'm a certified holistic nutritionist. And if you're not new here, then welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about a bunch of nutrition hacks, some things that we can do to boost the nutritional value of the foods that we eat and just make the foods that we're eating a little bit healthier, things like that. I'm also partnering up with iHerb for today's video, which is one of the world's largest online health food stores. I have a bit of a special place in my heart for health food stores because I worked at one for many years. They have an amazing selection of over 30,000 natural health products from food to supplements to beauty items, and they ship to over 150 different countries. Also, all of their orders are shipped from climate control distribution centers to ensure that the quality of their products uh, remain. Um, they also have 24 seven customer support in 10 different languages. So they're amazing. Be sure to check the description box below for links to any of the food items that I will be talking about in today's video. So let's get started. Number one is to use vegetables as a base. I love my rice, I love my spaghetti, but sometimes it can get a little bit monotonous and what we can do is actually use a couple of vegetables in place of those things um, to get more veggies in our diet and also more fiber. So some of my favorite things to do here are, for example, you can use a spiralized zucchini or spaghetti squash in place of pasta noodles. You can use cauliflower as a rice, which you can just do by grating it up or putting it into your food processor um, or using it as a base for pizza crust even. Almond flour is great for this as well. And really this is just a great way to reduce the amount of um, maybe excess refined carbohydrates that we are eating. Steep your herbal tea with a lid on it. When you are steeping your teas with the steam all going up in the air, you can actually lose some of the beneficial properties of the herb, the active constituents, can actually be released through the steam. So just pop a little lid on your mug when you have your tea bag in there with the hot water um, and then let it steep with the lid on to preserve some of that goodness. This is especially important for medicinal herbal teas like peppermint and one of my personal favorites is green tea. Right now I'm loving Yogi's decaf green tea. I've been on a bit of a low caffeine kick these days. Grind your whole flax seeds as needed uh, when you are using them as opposed to buying big bags of pre-ground flax seeds or flax meal. And the reason for this is because once you grind up flax seeds, you're exposing them to oxygen, to light, and to heat, and the delicate oils that are contained within the seed are now exposed. I have these whole brown flax seeds by Bob's Red Mill that you can get from iHerb. Uh, this is usually the brand that I like to buy, and I just keep them in the fridge. I do sometimes like to have a little jar of pre-ground uh, flax seeds that I grind myself in my fridge, but I make sure that I'm going to be going through that jar pretty quickly and not letting it sit in my refrigerator for too long, like too many weeks or months. And by the way, if you're wondering what flax seeds are good for, they're a fantastic source of omega-3 fatty acids, fiber, and they can even be used as an egg substitute in a lot of recipes. So you can do this by just mixing one tablespoon of ground flax with two tablespoons of water and letting it sit for a few minutes to thicken. My next tip is to soak or even sprout your legumes or some of your grains prior to use. This is such a great way to enhance the nutritional quality of things like beans and lentils and uh, makes them a lot easier to digest as well. Probably my favorite legume to sprout are green lentils. I love them, they're so tasty, and it's also so easy to do. All you need are some dried green lentils. I have this one here from Bob's Red Mill. And you'll just add some to a bowl, any amount that you like. Maybe about a cup is a great place to start. Let them soak in clean water for 24 hours, and then transfer them to a strainer or a fine mesh strainer, and um, rinse them morning and evening for about three days. You can put a little cloth over it just to cover them, and then you'll notice that they're going to start to sprout. But like I said, there's a lot of different beans and grains that we can sprout. If you are in a bit of a pinch, you can also get, you can get this from iHerb, I have a package of sprouted quinoa by Organic Traditions. That way you don't have to go through the rinsing, soaking process yourself. My next tip is to let certain veggies sit 
uh, after chopping. So what I mean by this is that some vegetables like garlic and onion and broccoli and kale actually have specific enzymes that are activated after they have been chopped up or crushed or sliced and allowed to sit for 10 to 15 minutes or so, just left kind of on your cutting board. And those activated enzymes help to increase the nutritional quality of those foods. Broccoli and kale, they contain an enzyme called myrosinase that helps to convert some of the plant nutrients into their active form, so it's pretty cool. Also, another little tip here is that vitamin C helps to also enhance that myrosinase enzyme with kale and broccoli so squeeze a little bit of lemon juice uh, in your recipes that contain those foods and that'll help to enhance it as well and speaking of vitamin C my next nutrition hack here is to eat vitamin C rich foods alongside iron rich foods vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron so this might be adding a squeeze of lemon juice or orange juice to a spinach salad spinach is a good source of plant-based iron or tossing other citrus foods or strawberries or apples in with a lentil based dish make sure that you are consuming adequate amounts of fat. Fat actually helps with the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So vitamins A, vitamin D, E, and K. Also helps with the uh, absorption of things like beta carotene found in sweet potato and carrots and squash. So, you know, even drizzling a little bit of olive oil on those kinds of foods. But just in general, every day, making sure that we are getting Fat from things like avocado, eggs, coconut, olives, all different kinds of nuts and seeds. Some of my favorites are pecans, walnuts, and Brazil nuts are really nice too, which by the way, just one Brazil nut contains 96 micrograms or 175% of the recommended daily intake of selenium. It's pretty cool. Selenium is a very antioxidant rich mineral. I have these organic raw Brazil nuts by Sun Food. And really just consuming enough fat is important for hormone health, it's important for our skin, for our brain. It's also really important for blood sugar balance throughout the day, which brings me to my next point. And that is to combine fat, fiber, and protein with most of your meals and snacks. This is really gonna help to stabilize your blood sugar so that you don't have crazy roller coaster blood sugar spikes and crashes. This is especially great with um, meals containing higher amounts of carbs. So for example, oatmeal with a spoonful of nut butter, like almond butter, pasta with added veggies and lean meats, or if you're having rice, adding things like chickpeas and avocado, just making sure that you're balancing out your meals uh, in that way. And also when you're doing this, you are kind of automatically making it a much more nutritious, well-balanced meal too, and feeling more satisfied throughout the day. Make smoothies for really quick nutrition powerhouses. I know that smoothies are definitely nothing new these days. Everyone and their grandmother are drinking green smoothies, but I wanna mention it here because if it's been a while that you have pulled out your blender and made a smoothie, it really is such an easy and quick way to just get such a powerhouse of nutrition, especially, you know, first thing in the morning to start your day. If you want, you can even pre-make a couple of smoothies or plop some ingredients into a jar so that it's ready to, you know, blend up in the morning to save you some time. But also smoothies are such a great way to jam in some really good, you know, add-ons like hemp seeds or flax seeds like we talked about or chia seeds. I always, always, always add hemp seeds to my smoothies. Pretty much I never go without adding hemp seeds. I have these ones here by Manitoba Harvest you can get from iHerb. Chia seeds are a great addition to these ones here from Nutiva. These types of seeds contain good quality omega-3 fats and fiber of course which again just like balancing our blood sugar in the previous point adding these kinds of things to a smoothie is a really really good thing to do especially if your smoothie is going to be somewhat fruit heavy but greens are easily added to smoothies right spinach especially baby spinach. You can also try adding frozen cauliflower or zucchini to a a smoothie even as a replacement for ice. They help to thicken and add creaminess to a smoothie without adding too much flavor. 
cook with better quality fats and oils. So especially when it comes to heating oils up, it's just a matter of making some really simple swaps with the types of oils that you are using. We want to try and opt for oils that are more stable at higher heat temperatures. So a good rule of thumb here is to aim for oils that tend to be solid at room temperature. So coconut oil uh, is a great one to be cooking with at higher heat uh, temperatures. This one here I have uh, by Nutiva, comes in a nice glass jar, which I like. Butter or ghee are great options. And because it has a higher saturated fat content, it's not going to oxidize or go rancid as easily or create carcinogenic compounds when it's heated to a higher temperature, like some other oils like um, vegetable oils or canola oils, the ones that you find in those clear plastic packages that are not as stable to higher heat because those ones are much higher in polyunsaturated fats. But speaking of cooking, switch up your cooking method by lightly steaming your veggies more often than boiling or or frying or sauteing them in oil. You can do this with a steamer or even try adding a little bit of broth for more flavor to a skillet, add in your veggies, pop a lid on top and let them gently cook until they are al dente, which is basically just still a little firm and bright in color, not mushy. This is also generally a better way to preserve the nutritional quality of foods. And my last nutrition hack here is something that you wouldn't necessarily think would make it onto this list, but that is to chew your food thoroughly. And if you have seen any of my digestion videos, Digestion 101, where I have talked about this, chewing your food thoroughly, you would know why it's so important. And the reason why just something as simple as chewing your food better can help you get more nutrition into your body is because when you chew your food thoroughly, you're increasing the surface area of that food so that enzymes in our saliva and also in our stomach are better able to break down that food so that we can extract the nutrients much better from those foods. It's also a lot easier on our digestive system when we're not swallowing huge chunks of food and you know not eating too quickly, that kind of thing. And I've definitely talked about this a lot on my channel too, is just generally eating slower. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned a thing or two. Leave me a comment below if you do any of these things. Thanks again to iHerb for partnering with me on today's video. Make sure that you check out the description box below for links to some of the products that I talked about in today's video. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.